Okay, so now that we have Python installed, we're going to go over some basics of the command of the text editor we're going to use, and then we're going to go into some important fundamentals on how to deal with big projects that require multiple files. So first thing we're going to do is install the text editor we want. So I'd recommend Splat Text 3. I think it's really good. It's basic while having all the functionality you need. It's not overwhelming. Just click here and then go to the installer. I've already installed it, so I'll just open it up. Here we should have a window that looks like this. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is going to go to the command palette, so tools, command palette, install package here, this first one, click it, just wait a second, and then you're going to type in terminus, and you got this, and then you should see down here it says installed, and then it's successfully installed, as you saw. So that's it for now. Okay, so now our sublime text is ready. So now let's try and create like a practice project, an example project on how we might want to format and work with big projects that require multiple files. Because if you remember, our, the goal of this whole creating a hydro, hydroponic system is we need to be able to control the lights, the pump, the water level. That's a lot of different parts that if we all put it in one big file, it'll be really confusing, hard to look at, and hard to navigate. But if we had a bunch of different files, one called pump.py, one called lights.py, it's really easy to go to where you need to be. So if the lights aren't working, oh, it's in lights.py, I can go there and fix it. So having multiple files makes it really easy to work with these big projects. So for an example, we'll create a project. So the way we do this, we first create a folder. It doesn't really matter where it is. I'm creating it on the desktop. And we're going to rename it to the name of our project. For now, we'll just call it uh, my project. Cool. And then in Sublime Text 3, just uh, put it open. And then you go desktop, and then you find your project. I just ate mine on my desktop. So my project here. Click on it and press open. So the first thing we want to do is go to Tools. Command palette, type in terminus, open default shell and panel. And we get this down here. And this will be something different for you. This is just what, uh, it's just my username and my computer's name. So that'll be different for you, but it should say the path to your project. So the, the last thing here should say the name of your project. Okay. And then the, obviously we have no files in our folder yet. It's an empty folder. So our project's kind of boring. So we'll create a new, a new file. In our first file, when you're creating a big project like this, you should name it something like main.py. And this lets people know who are reading your code that this is the main file and everything else kind of feeds into this. So let's just write some code and make sure that's working. Hello world. And then what you can go down here is you can type python main.py. Press enter. And you can see you get the hello world output. And we could change this. And we say, how are you doing? And then you can go down here. And if you want, you can just press the up arrow on your keyboard to get the last command. Press enter. Oh, I didn't save the project. You have to save it every, every time you make a change. Go down here, up arrow again. Go, how are you doing? So that's cool. So we're able to run our file in the, down here, which is really, it makes it really easy to work and make edits and stuff like that. But let's say that we're having a big project and we need multiple files to do different things. So let's say we want to create a new file, and this file will handle, we'll call it say hello. And this file will handle saying hello to the user. So we'll create a function called hello. Let's say it takes in a name. And the function will just print hello name. That's a format string. And cool. So now we have this function, but it's not really doing anything. So we're not calling the function anywhere. So let's go back to our main, our main file. And what you can do here is type from, say hello, the name of your file, import the name of the function, hello. And now that allows us to use that function in this file. Uh, what is your name? So what we're doing here is in main.py, we're grabbing this function and we're able to use it in this file here. So if I just save both files with command S, and then we go to here again, up arrow, enter. What is your name? David. Hello, David. So although this is really unnecessary because it's only like two lines, what it allows you to do is branch out. So then let's say we had another file, and this one handles... Uh, Guess a number. 
of UI. So this one says, one guess. This will take in no arguments. Uh, guess a number and one to ten. So let's say this is just like a little game that is guessing a number. So for this, we'll input random, and we'll say number equals random. Uh, Brandon, oops, from one to ten. So this picks a random number from one to ten, and then we'll say while g does not equal number, we'll initialize g to negative one, so the condition is true no matter what then we'll say guess a number from 1 to 10 and then we'll say if g is bigger than 10 or wait if g is bigger than the number we want to say too big otherwise otherwise oops if g is if the number is bigger than g, then we want to print too small. And then once they guess it right, we'll say print. Nice job. Okay, so now we have this guess a number function in, or we have this guess function in guess number.py, which has this little game. So then we can go back to main.py and do the same thing. So from guess a number, import guess. And then we can just call guess here. And then if we save everything again and go back here and run it, what is your name? David. Guess number from 1 to 10. 5, too big, three, 4, 3, 2. Wow. Ah, I see what I did. This is never going to be true. All right. So if, you, if your program's running like that and you made a mistake and you want to cancel it, what you can do is hold Control C on your keyboard and that triggers a keyboard interrupt which stops the program. So that's really good if you're debugging and something like that happens and you need to make a change. So let's import David, it's five, too small, seven, too small, eight, too small, nine, too small, 10. Wow, I'm getting really unlucky. One and then 10 is my numbers. But yeah, and then you see, nice job, because the program completed. So, although in this example, you wouldn't need multiple files, this shows you that once you have a big project that has many things going on, it's really easy to import them all into your main file, and then you can have all the programs run here. Because instead, you would have to have all these functions in main.py, and it would get really messy and hard to locate stuff. Because let's say the guess a number function wasn't working, I would have to scroll down to find a guess a number and then make the change. Obviously, in this, this small program and this small project, it's not necessary, but once we start writing code for the pump, writing code for the lights, writing code for the water levels, we're going to have a lot of different components working together. So like once we have our, all our code written, we could say like from pump import manage pump from lights import, import manage lights from water import manage water. So then you could just say manage lights, manage palm, manage water. So your main.py file is really simple. And then in all your branching out files, like once we write the pump file, once we write lights, once we write water, that's where the majority of your code goes. And then main.py brings it all together in this simple layout and makes it all work together. So I hope this example was enough to show you why using multiple files is good and how you can use this import syntax from file name import function to help you when you're using multiple projects. So that, that was the two goals, showing you how you could use multi-file projects, uh, the benefits of using multi-file projects, and how you can interact with this console down here to run your code and test things out. So yeah, next time we're going to be going over some basics of Raspberry Pi and programming with the Raspberry Pi. 
and then we'll get into actually some start building some stuff and then we'll be writing some code.